All right, we're in Rhode Island. I'm with Riley, and what we're gonna go over today is we're gonna go over the Gaj God Gajrito. I'll leave, leave that, that in. in there. Leave it in. The Gaguino, Gajrito. Gajuino. Gajuino, however you pronounce it. This is a very interesting project, and Riley spent the time, effort, and money to actually build one. So I just kind of want to show off, you know, what is the real world user experience of, of owning one of these and, you know, upkeeping it and, and all of that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just have Riley talk about talk about the gadrito gadrito <laughs> here you go all right so this is my uh 2017 uh gaja classic pro that i bought as a scratch and dent unit from whole latte love with the specific intention of turning it into a project which i want to emphasize here this is a project it is not uh, a commercial sort of thing uh you have to put the time into this that is like the only way you can do this for the, the curious this is a stm32 black bill lego build so basically the history of the project was that it started out on Arduino, hence the namesake. Um, and then the devs sort of realized that Arduino didn't have the development headroom for all the features they wanted to add. So they moved over to the STM32 controller. Uh, and the fact that it's a Lego build means that the you just have a sort of pro micro size, like kind of yay big controller that you hand wire a whole bunch of uh, power distribution and other components to. Um, later, they, the developers released a uh, PCB that has all those components pre-soldered onto it, so you just drop it in there, throw, uh, wire it up, and it's a little bit simpler. Uh, but what this project has is uh, primarily a pressure and temperature control, so you can imitate uh, other types of machines similar to a decent. So if you come over here, you see there are a whole bunch of different profiles that come preloaded. These are all the stock profiles. Um, you see you have one that imitates Londinium, similar to the Decent Spring Lover profile. That's like my personal favorite, but that's a hotly contested thing. Um, this particular unit also has hardware skills. It's an optional feature. So I put load cells into the drip tray so oh, it can wow. weigh your shots as you pull them. Uh, the project also features support for a um, predictive scale, as they call it, which... Uh, guesses how much your shot weighs based on flow, and honestly, it's, in my experience, a little bit more accurate than the hardware skills, which we'll get to. Um, you also just have the option to brew manually, so you can just take the slider here and use it like the flow profiling slider on top of an E61, and you can just go through and slide it back and forth, change your flow rate. Um, but yeah, it'll give you feedback in real time about the shots you're pulling, temperature, pressure, flow rate, all in the line graph, which is really neat. It also uses the pump to assist the steam on the machine. Okay, you uh, got a custom steam wand on this guy. Yes, this is the steam wand uh, off of an Escato Dream. It's a cool such steam wand. I got it off of FerrariExpresso.com. Uh, FerrariExpresso.com, it's a pre-made kit. Um, just, it gives you a whole lot more mobility than the stock uh, wand. 10 out of 10 recommendation. Uh, if you're building one of these, definitely don't skimp on that. Yeah, so what was kind of your uh, reasoning for building one of these? Or like, what was that process like? Uh, frankly, I wanted a project to do. Uh, I was uh, taking some time off of work and I needed something to keep me sane. Uh, I had a Bambino before this, uh, like everyone else getting into the hobby these days. And I really didn't like the shots that it uh, pulled. It something that a lot of reviewers really don't mention is that you get very astringent shots on light roast out of it because the temperature control isn't very good. So I went down this rabbit hole of how can I achieve better temperature and pressure control than the Bambino around a similar-ish kind of price point. And this was before the Profitec Go came out. And I said, okay, let me take this Gaja and just build the most swole entry level single <laughs> boiler machine that I can. Um, so I added uh, temperature and pressure control via the Gajuino mod to this machine here. And mm -hmm. I'm very happy with the results. Mm -hmm. uh, it took me, uh, I, I didn't work on it continuously, but it took me about like three long nights of work, plus like two weeks of just working on it very sparingly on and off. Uh, if you just sit down, you can easily do it in two days if you know what you're doing. It also depends how many optional features you plan to add. Uh, there, The one optional feature that this machine doesn't have is the uh, TOFN LED board. I'm not exactly sure if that's how you're supposed to say it, but essentially what it does is it adds drip, tra drip tray lights, which I added separately anyway, and it also adds a uh, water level sensor. So you can actually see how much water is in the tank without bending down a little bit. Oh, yeah. But you can see it. It's, it's pretty visible on a Gaga Classic. <laughs> Especially when you have the lights in there. I mean, yeah. have a straw in there mm -hmm. like I do. The straw float mm -hmm. works. Yeah. So uh, how much how much is it to do the mod and how much, you know, do you have to source all the parts or can you buy them? Or what, what does it kind of look like nowadays? Uh, it's changed a lot in recent years. So it started out as just a bill of materials from AliExpress and you just had to go through and order all the parts separately. 
And that's still an option you can go, and it is probably the fastest route, mm -hmm. if I had to guess. Um, in the early days of the PCB era, uh, you could join a group buy on the Discord, where they would run it at zero, co uh, uh, zero co or at cost, uh, zero profits made off of it. This is, again, a non-commercial project. They're not making any money off of this. And they would just build PCBs for you, and then you'd receive them three months later. Uh, and I just didn't like that I had to wait three months for a PCB, so I just elected to do the LEGO mod instead. Uh, nowadays, there's one, as far as I know, one authorized retailer. There have been several copycats in the past. Don't support them. They are not licensed. Uh, that sell uh, Gadrino PCB kits. I believe the lead time on those these days is about two weeks if mm -hmm. you really want them. And that's not all the components you need, but it is everything that stays within the controller box housing, essentially. So you still need to source your own pressure transducer and thermocouple and all those other things. But uh, that streamlines the whole process quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Overall, uh, including all the other 58 millimeter accessories I bought for this thing, and the steam wand, and the low profile drip tray, and all that, uh, in addition to the gadget reading components, I have about a thousand dollars invested into this. Wow. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's a lot for a single boiler, quite frankly, uh, which is about what the profit it goes for, or uh, profit it go, goes for these days anyway. And it's, in my opinion, a better machine. Yeah. But it, you know, the question is how much you value your time at that point. Right. Yeah. Even at minimum wage, this is easily could have been decent money. <laughs> <laughs> if you are just doing the bare bones Gasrina mod, uh, no optional features or anything, you could spend less than two hundred bucks all in, uh, and have yourself a machine with uh, digital pressure profiling, which I think is frankly huge. I mean, the really cool thing about this machine and really the reason why I think this mod is very important to exist is it does solve this huge pain point with the, the Gaja Classic and Gaja Classic Pro, uh, which is just honestly consistency. Um, I think consistency with the Gaja Classic out of the box is, is terrible. Um, mm -hmm. the, the fact that it's like a high pressure, uh, OPV and the temperature swings are crazy. Like you can spend all this time and effort to master temp profiling or temp surfing and all of that. Um, or, you know, you could, and maybe in my opinion nowadays, it's like, you might as well spend that time and effort and just turn your machine into something that's actually temperature, uh, much easier to manage on the temperature. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is a, a Gaja Classic, right? So, at, you know, you're still dealing with Gaja Classic build. You're still dealing with kind of all the the UI, you know, the user experience of this machine, mm -hmm. which which for some, it's perfectly fine. Um, for others, you know, like a lot of people do like to switch over to, you know, more fancier machines. But um, if your purpose is to pull the highest quality shot possible for the money uh, and you, you know, you don't want to deal with levers or anything like that, this is a very, very appealing um, setup. So let's kind of show off some other stuff and then we'll go and, and pull some shots. Sure. I guess the other thing that's worth mentioning that I might have forgotten already is that it uses the pump to increase the stream pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, they call that feature Dream Steam that's unique to the newer builds. So you get more steam capacity. Um, over, if you come around the back here, oh, yeah. you Let can see how you flash the firmware onto this thing. Um, you have this uh, ST-Link programmer that I just keep taped onto the back uh -huh. of the machine, and it has this little USB cover, if I can pop that off. <laughs> oh, wow. And you just attach you hook it, hook it up. It. Yeah, and then um, you can flash the firmware, you can get all the profiles and stuff. So, no, is any of this Bluetooth or Wi-Fi at all, or? It's in the works. It's okay. It's teased by the creator right now, but cool. right now it is all on the machine only. Mm -hmm. um, it's also worth noting that you can change whatever you want about this because it's open source. Right. You can sideload profiles if you really want to. People have upgraded the screens. They made them bigger. For example, uh, the programmer even <laughs> put a, a display on his wife's iPad. Oh, yeah, which yeah. Is very, very cool so to that, see. That's really cool. Yeah, because right now, you know, this is still integrated or like, I, I guess this is what they just give you to 3D print and mm -hmm. you just cover it up with this and you stick your little display in there and, you know, it, it does work, uh, works completely fine, but you know you can definitely go and, and modify this. So so very similar to, to you know what I'm most familiar with, which is the decent, um, which you know right now has this huge community behind it. Uh, it's got all this development and you know all open and and that's really cool that people are taking a lot of those same cues and, and applying it to to the Gaja. Do you have to be mechanically capable to build this machine? Um, I mean. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. The developers are very, very good about documenting this. So if you are willing to put the time into understanding, you don't have to have any formal education to do this. Mm -hmm. um, they will teach you how to solder in the documentation. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, they, they'll, they'll really hold your hand from square zero if you're willing to put the time in. Mm -hmm. um, 
I, my background is in mechanical engineering. I also have some uh, experience tutoring uh, very very basic embed, embedded stuff mm -hmm. on Arduino. So that helped a ton. I see. Okay. Um, the Gadduino server exists, so you can ask questions, and the developers will help you. Okay. They are very help. They're very patient. They're very helpful, uh, as long as you listen to them and give them the time that they're giving you. Uh, to I see. Basic respect. Yeah. So definitely, you know. Do your research before you dive it into building one of these. Like a thousand percent. Yeah, that that definitely seems that way. I mean, uh, you you need to solder. You need to be able to solder. You need to be able to screw things in, and you know, do do all the basic uh, mechanical work to to obviously modify a machine like this. So so this is the disclaimer that I wanted to add in there. <laughs> Other disclaimer: you're still working with 120 or 200 uh, or 240 volts mm. uh, on the machine. That is potentially dangerous. Don't attempt this if you're not comfortable messing with a machine yeah. like that. That just goes for any machine mod. But yeah, um, uh, my background certainly helped. I didn't have any questions when I was building mine. But if you have questions, that's okay. Ask them. That's what the help yeah. is there for. So that's awesome to that that they actually are willing to you know help you out and there's a community there. Yes. Um, Huge shout out to Lugal, by the way, one of the developers who helped me troubleshoot my scales and uh, was very patient with me mm -hmm. when I did not have the most recent version of the firmware yeah, downloaded onto that's my cool. Computer. Yeah, I, I I feel like I have seen people. Uh, you can buy pre modded Gajrinos nowadays, right? I I feel like I did see some guys sell these. Like you could just straight up buy them. I I don't know. That guy was not authorized to do that. Oh, okay. However, so, if you buy someone else's old project uh that's fine that's that's totally cool uh, people sell them on uh the subreddit coffee swap or mm -hmm. the espresso yeah yeah, yeah. got it okay yeah because i was like I, I swear some guy was selling it for like three grand i was like whoa you could just buy a decent for three grand and, and I, I don't know yeah i think i would just I, I mean if i was spending three grand i would just straight up buy a better machine but yeah. uh you know uh, that, that is a thing. So, you know, be on the, be on the lookout for that. Um, use your best judgment, of course, with, if, when you're building one of these. Okay. We're gonna make some coffee now. <laughs> right now we get that live readout of the temperatures. So is, is this boiler or group head temperature? Uh, it's boiler. Boiler. Okay. There's a, th uh, at least I believe so. There's a thermocouple running to the boiler mm -hmm. that you have to wire in. So still, you know, it's still a, a Gaja classic made of steel and aluminum and yeah. not brass. So it's not going to be super, super stable, but yeah, so so I guess like you know if you're pulling really really long shots, that's when you're still you're still gonna see the the you know potential literally running out of steam, right? Maybe I don't know. I've I've never used one of these. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. No, it'll automatically cut you off after a minute. Actually. Oh, got it. Okay, yeah, I see. So possible. for some very interesting styles of shots, you you know you might not be able to do that on this. What are you thinking? Um, I found twenty grams with this basket. Sure, let's do it. Maybe like a t twenty to sixty or something. So. I'm just really curious, you know, we're going to use some light roast coffee here. This is uh, from our friend uh, Mood Trap Coffee from Singapore, um, because this was my biggest pain point with the Gaja Classic was pulling some of these lighter, uh, lighter, more delicate coffees is you just didn't have, you know, any control and the 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 stock pressure was crazy. So uh, uh, hopefully, you know, if this if we can just solve that problem by doing this modification and pulling these this style of shot, then then I think this is this is great, and we're just using a DF sixty four P here. That's uh, definitely been modified. <laughs> yes. Um, we're gonna dial dial this coffee in. Graphs might not look the best or whatever, but we just want to show off kind of that user experience, and then we're gonna pull some little nicer coffee like this Alita Natural. So um, cool. So uh, what I've gone in here and done is set my dose and my ratio that I want, and if the scales are actually reading properly, they'll stop it on the weight for mm, me. Wow. Uh, it's been kind of finicky for me, but it is a feature that's really nice if you can get it work working properly. You can also do that using the predictive scales as well. So we set to one to three, 20 gram dose. All right, let's see. Port filter out. And are we gonna pull blooming or londinium or? Let's go for blooming. Okay, we're gonna go blooming. So I'm really curious what that's gonna look like or honestly sound like on a, on a machine like this. Oh, it, it'll sound like the machine's broken. That's a, a fun work <laughs> of the, 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 the Gajuino. The, the Vibe Pump. Uh, I'm having a hard time WTing without no, a funnel in, the, in uh, this basket. That's fine. It's fine. I'll clean up later. Yeah. So how come this light is flashing or, do, or has this modification changed stuff with the, the lights at all? Or? Yes, it has. And I don't quite understand it to be honest, <laughs> but I, all the information that you need is on the screen. So I don't... Uh, you know, look at the lights. Uh-huh. Yeah, but I know there's a whole lot of uh, paying attention to the lights you have to do when you temp surf. Yeah. You don't anymore, which is real nice. 
All right. All right so here's our puck. Cool. So let's, and, and we're just going to use the built-in scale, right? Um, or how are gonna we going to do the, this? I'm going to put my black mirror underneath uh -huh. it just so we can have a comparison to the built-in scale. Yeah. So, you know, it is pretty clear they're still they're still nailing out some of the quirks here and there, but I'll tear this and so do you, do you can you start the shot from the screen or do you No, pull? you have to use the actual Okay, use the physical button. button. Okay. So, I'm going Let's to Let's go ahead. Yeah. Oh. There we go. So, you see this graph will come up as soon as you hit brew. And it's going to show your pressure, your, oh, very flow, cool. your weight, and your temperature all in real time. Does sound like it's broken. <laughs> this doesn't even sound that bad to me. Oh, wow. This pressure goes hey, up. Hey, I stopped on, on the right weight. Boom. <laughs> I did it anyway, but yeah. So 59 out. Fifth, yeah, fifth, or or maybe that's our scale being inaccurate, but the top there was pretty accurate. What, 57 out? Oh, so that's definitely boiler temp, right? Because it's 100, or it goes up. Oh, geez, wow. Yeah, that, that, that went up quite a bit. Um, Okay, just roll this a little bit. But uh, yeah, I mean, looking at that graph, definitely saw the, the pressure uh, modulate there. Oh, and it, what is it doing now? So it, it releases the pressure. It does that every so often. Okay. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why it does that, to be honest, but even when you don't have a have that right after a shot, uh -huh. it'll do that. Um, it also does keep track of how many shots you've pulled, and it'll remind you to clean it. So that's kind of... Oh, cool. yeah. Yeah. But... Um, regular Gaja doesn't do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this does a lot more than the regular Gaja, but you can have all your profiles up there. So we just pulled a standard blooming espresso shot. Um, so are, are any of these variables adjustable from the screen, or do you have to go and, like, program it on a computer? Yeah. Um, you can... Let's see. Uh... If you just hit this button, you can you can adjust your temperature somehow. I'm trying to remember. Yes, right. So you can you can adjust all of this. Oh, okay. Wow. So look at that. You can adjust uh, infusions, your soak, your action. flow, all of that. Um, so you definitely can go through and uh, adjust all of this. And there's a manual mode. I I, I think this is such a cool manual mode. Yeah. <laughs> you just swipe it across, it's, but yeah, it's just like the E61 paddle. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so you know, this is already a level of control that you cannot get with the normal Gaja Classic. Uh, I mean, you can stick, you could do like the dimmer mod and whatever, but it's not giving you this level of of consistency. Like the, the what I'm really after with this modification is consistency, and I think we're really getting. So so let's try let's try the shot out. I'm really curious. But you know, light roasts on a Gaja, oh, very scary. <laughs> It's a little stringent. I think I ground a little too coarse. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, that's so tasty. Yeah. Give that a shot. Well, that tastes great. I mean, the the thing is, is this is the style of shot that is really difficult to pull. Like you cannot pull this style of shot with this stock Gaja Classic. This is that blooming espresso style of shot. Um, I mean, the fact that we were seeing that flow and pressure modulate as the shot pulled is is why this is tasting really good. I mean, it, it's yeah, you cannot do this out of normal gaja. So no. so this is instantly instantly a much better quality of shot from a machine like this, which which is quite amazing. Like this is amazing. So you know, let, I, let's let's keep let's keep going. Has the steaming improved at all as well? Yes. Oh my god. I'm, I'm curious about that. Let's do we have a picture up here. Well, do, does that change at all? Like, is the heat up time for the steam or switching any faster or? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I'm not entire. I don't know why it would be. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, uh, the the real big change is just with the, the pump constantly feeding the steam pressure. So you get a lot less drop off over time. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to try steaming. It's been a while since I've steamed on a Gaja Classic, but I'm, I'm going to try it. This is really cool here. Um, obviously a much better steam on with the uh, Ascaso uh, steam on cool touch as well, but, uh, I guess I'll, we'll just, and that's not part of the mod. That's its own yeah, thing. Yeah. That's its own thing. But, uh, I'm curious about what the, the pressure is going to be like, because with, with the normal Gaja classic, at least with mine, um, you'll see the, the steam kind of pulsate. Um, and I'm curious if that's removed here. Also curious about dryness, but really mainly about the strength and, and how long it goes for it. Of course, I'm not a world latte artist or anything, but I'm just curious. So I'm just gonna kind of run some steam into an empty pitcher and then we'll actually steam some milk and you know, we'll, we'll pour it into that shot we, we just pulled, even though that was a light roast, but we'll see where we go. So, yeah. okay, I don't need to see any more. That is already a lot better. I just also sprayed myself. So the wetness is still about the same. This is definitely wet steam, uh, but 
the amount of power there is already significantly more. And, and also with, with these, you can actually kind of bleed out some of that like wetness, uh, but. So I'm curious if I let it run for a little bit longer, what's gonna happen. Usually on the normal one, it'll probably start dying about now. So the fact that it's still going is really, really great. So, all right, this is this is really, oh, and it was telling me ready to steam. It was giving me uh, a bit of feedback on the screen there as well. So, um, yeah, well, it is, it is telling us that. So, uh, yeah, this is already uh, much better than the, the normal, Gaja Classic, right? And and I'm just saying, you know, I, I've never used this machine, like a, a modded Gaja like this before. So uh, this is already solves a other big problem of the Gaja Classic. It's also been a very long time since I have steamed any milk at all. So wish me the best of luck. Oh wow, and I, I got modulation of power too. Like I, I had this valve not even open that much. So, and this is also a cool touch steam one too. So I'm touching the steam one, feels good. I gotta get a little, uh, here I'll just, well, we'll wipe it off later, but. All right, let's see if my. It's a cool touch one, it's fine. It's cool touch, yeah. But quality of foam seems to be okay. I mean, it's been a very long time since I've steamed, so, you know, I'm gonna just uh, uh, make excuses, but let's see if I remember how to do this. And this is a light roast as well. All right, not the best and worst, but uh, yeah, you know, we're getting clear definition of lines there. Um, I was not held back at all by the actual steam power. Of course, I, I, I have actually not steamed in months now because uh, I gave away my San Remo U to uh, local roaster, so I haven't really used an espresso machine in a while. But the, the really nice thing about, you know, texture of milk is good. Um, and, and, and I just remember when I was using my other classic, when you're steaming, uh, you had to always be aware of when the steam temperature was, was at like the peak before you started to steam. There was a timing on it that you, you know, you just had to make sure it was the most optimal. So you would basically kind of trick the machine. And this happened also with when trying to pull shots is like, you needed to make sure the temperature is at the peak temperature to maximize the amount of time that you could incorporate and, and all that. That's been completely solved for this. So this is fantastic for steaming. Really, really solved a big problem for this. And then, you know, when you're done, you just, you just we'll, we'll turn that seam off. Um, but yeah, let's keep pulling some shots on this. So far, very impressed. Light roast. <laughs> you can taste it. Light roast tato. Light roast tato. I mean, it tastes fine. You're just tasting the milk. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but I was able to get, I was able to get decent lines there, like from, That's from, a whole from this. Really. I can do it. <laughs> We're going to go now pull some Alita. Um, yeah, you know, pretty impressive so far. I'm going to go knock this out. Yep. Yeah. So we got some say Alita natural. This is really kind of that test of, I was never able to get say to taste the way I like it to taste on a gaja. So let's see if we can get it to taste good, but I'm already, I'm already pretty impressed. Uh, you get all that profiling and temperature stability and that just solves all the, all the problems with the machine. You know, these light roasts are hard to pull. Here's the true test. <laughs> if this can make say taste good, I will instantly build one. <laughs> be care be careful honest? what you ask for. Yeah, let's go one to, one to three. All right. one so you said to one to three. And uh, 95 I'll... C? Yeah. So will, will it wait for you, the temperature to drop before it pulls or? or... No. <laughs> oh, okay, so we, we gotta wait for it to drop a little. Yep. Well, we were steaming right before this, so that's why. Yep. So it's a way hotter steam. It's still a single boiler. <laughs> yeah, still a single boiler. You still run into the single boiler challenges where switching between the two uh, is going to be the big one of the biggest pain points. Um, but cool thing here is you actually get that real time temp readout, so you can you can just you know be careful before you pull a shot. You don't want to be running all the steam through your puck. Um, but you know, so far, uh, this is a, a lot more data and a lot more, uh, you know, data 
points on what's happening to your coffee. There's so. no more counting the seconds after the light turns off. <laughs> yeah. Which you're so familiar with. Yeah. All right, it's no longer going to steam. I say we just go yeah, for it. Yeah, let's go for it. Three, two, one, go. Lonbinium style shot. Wow. Got that pre... Uh, Initial saturation, and then now it's going to be like that lever style. The graph is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that looks like, you know, what it looks like on the Decent, where there's that bloom phase, and then there we go. Our flow is at around three mils per second, which is good. This is this is going to taste really good then. Wow. That's, look, that's looking good. That's looking like a proper... I forgot Proper to tear, shop. tear my scale before oh. we did it, but it looks like But that's, that's still giving us that real, yeah, that's still giving us that, that readout. So, you know, we were just cross-referencing the weights here, but that's, that's, yeah. I mean, that looks like what it would look like on any other machine when you're pulling there. Oh, the temperature does, you know, kind of go up. I guess it's still targeting like higher temps regardless. But. All right. All right, let's, let's try this out. So, um, you know, I don't even need to taste this to say this is gonna look, this is gonna taste a lot better than a normal Gaja Classic shot. <laughs> and we got that purge too. So this is really like a like a lever at this point where it's giving that purge and now it's gonna give us that dry, dry puck. <laughs> well, much drier than normal. And that's still gonna knock out easily. The other shot we pulled was just easy. You just knock it out. And of course, this is not to say that you should judge the quality of your shots by how easy they are to knock out. Don't do that. Oh, but that's easy. Look at that. Still knocked out. Super easy. It's like if you were to put all your skill points into quality, right, performance and nothing else, right? <laughs> you know, it's still a Gaja Classic. Yeah, still Gaja Classic. So, you know, when you take the puck out, you still got to deal with the Gaja Classic build, of a lot of flex everywhere, but I don't care about that if the coffee tastes good. All right, let's get this to the taste. Give us this. Taste it really good <laughs> <laughs> yeah panama gesha oh, i'm gonna take let me I'm sad i'm not gonna have that coffee again for a while <laughs> <laughs> light roast solved on on gaja classic this coffee smells great those are these are these like more complex delicate coffees are always hard to pull with single boilers so we'll see yeah get that defined acidity a lot of complexities there um there was a thing you know with the normal gaja classic you don't, you don't have any of that control. So I always felt like pulling out the complexities of, of delicacies of lighter roast coffees was always always kind of a challenge. So this, because we actually had the bloom, we actually had the, the, the flow rate, you know, a targeted flow rate with that ramp up, like all of those properties is, is allowing us to actually pull these, you know, harder things to pull out of these lighter roasts. Like we're actually able to make these taste great on, on a machine like this, which is quite amazing, right? Because the only other machine that I know of that you can do this on is like a Flare 58, right? A Flare 58, some of those manual machines will let you do this, but if you really want to get up to this this type of thing, right? You got to modify brev Breville Dual Butter. You got to start, you know, start there, get it decent and all that. If you really want to make some of these lighter roast coffees shine, I would say, like having blooming is a really like fill and, and all that is really, really helpful. But man. That's tasting fantastic. Um, yeah, um, just just surprising to to taste that quality out of Gaja Classic. Of course, you know, very modified Gaja Classic and costs a lot more than a normal Gaja Classic, but quite amazing. So that's just what matters, right? Se steaming problem solved. Able to actually pull light roasts. Temperatures are pr pretty stable, which is like it's all great um of course still you gotta deal with the single boiler life which which is fine but you know i think those trade-offs are worth it right like if, if you once you get the machine set up we're pulling shot to shot dealing with this is completely fine you're gonna need to deal with that problem anyway when you have a single boiler with it modified or not yeah uh just like one final note about this yeah. is that you don't have to do this to a gaja classic if you don't want to um it, uh, it works for the gaja classic gaja classic pro but also um the all the features are supported on the Ancelio sylvia mm. as of right now so if you want to have a project where you build your own nicer espresso machine, uh, go with the Rancho Sylvia. Don't make the mistake I made. <laughs> okay. Do that instead. Um, but yeah, uh, there are to tons of people in the community experimenting with putting out other machines. Just you know, like a hundred dollar Delonghi for. Yeah, <laughs> that's like play. meme stuff right there. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I've seen it on. Uh, there are a couple people that have done it on those uh, old KitchenAid machines from the two thousands. The Perlines, <laughs> uh that are essentially two gauges stuck together. Uh, those are pretty cool. So that way you have a dual boiler Gajo, we know it's, it's so cool. Um, the creator of the PCB, Voss, shout out Voss, um, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, did it to his Starbucks Serena machine where he oh my replaced God. the pressure gauge on it with the display. 
and it looks super, super cool. Um, so yeah, if you have curiosities about this, you can join the Discord and look through everyone's forum posts and see what, mm -hmm. they're, what they're up to. It's super cool stuff. Yeah, but how's that taste? How's that tasting now? Oh, it's so good. I will just say, I cannot pull that I cannot make that coffee taste the way that's tastes with a stock Godra Classic. Or like, it's really hard. I got to pull out like, you know, much more expensive grinders to, to actually do that. Like at that point, it's like, you know, I'm using, I have to use a grinder to compensate for the machine's flaws. This here, this can scale with all of these grinders because you have access to that profiling. So I think that's really, really amazing, right? You can put this next to a 98 flat and pull fast flow shots. It's going to be able to actually keep up, which, which is amazing, uh, at least for espresso duty only. You know, if you're willing to put the time and effort into building one of these, I, I think this is very, very worthwhile to explore. Um, of course, read all the documentation, join the community, all of that. You know, big disclaimer there. <laughs> but, you know, do you, was it worth it for you? Oh, a thousand percent. Yeah. Absolutely. If you have the skills to do it and you have the time mm -hmm. and frankly, the cash. Um, uh, I, I say go for it. It's a lot yeah. Of fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this is a lot of fun and uh, I think the coffee coming off of it is really, really tasty. I mean, I, I just, you know, like the last two shots we pulled uh, with are, are some of the coffees that are much more difficult to pull. Um, and, you know, you, you uh, if you ask people online, hey, should I be pulling some of these coffees with the Gaja class? They probably tell you no. But if you did a modification like this, you can bring out all those complexities in these coffees and extract some of these lighter coffees we're able to solve the problem with the with the steaming. So very, very cool project. And I wanna thank Riley for spending the time and effort to actually build one of these, but also bring it over and, and talk talk to us all, all about it. So really, sh uh, you know, big shout outs uh, here and very cool. All right, thanks guys. See you around. <laughs>